Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, thank you very much for inviting me to this great event. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy to share my experience with you. Uh, when I arrived in the campus, I feel really exciting. Yeah, something really different than when I go to the office. Maybe that's because I spent 11 years for my bachelor. I spent six years for my master. Yeah, and also I was a lecturer, lecturer, adjunct professor for over 15 years. <laughs> yeah, I spent very long time in school. So, uh, but I'm not encouraging you to spend uh, just that long days, just like what I did. So, yeah, uh, I'm not here to encourage you to spend your life in the school. Uh, yeah, uh, and yes, uh, let me introduce myself a little bit more from here. Uh, I was a tech lead at MetaCore uh, and online tech lead at uh, Ubisoft Red Links. Ubisoft brought me here. Uh, I originally came from Korea. Uh, I came here five years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really love Finland, uh, except a little bit getting darker these days. Yeah, mm, it's really nice, but yeah. Anyway, I joined the game industry almost 30 years ago. Uh, there was not a fancy games like these days. Yeah, it was really uh, rough games. Yeah, I was a programmer uh, during uh, the early years. I did it established three different studios in Korea. Uh, I ran that for over 15 years. Yeah, it was quite uh, nice to run your own studio, but sometimes it's very he making a headache. Uh, yeah, it's not existing anymore. Yeah. yeah, I worked at Ubisoft, Smallgate, Newiz, KTH, yeah, the, the mostly in the companies in Korea. Yeah, uh, as I told you, I was a lecturer, uh, I was a adjunct professor for the schools. Uh, and yeah, uh, I, I didn't exactly count how many games I worked in uh, because some of the games, the project uh, was not really launched in the market and some, some launched it, but yeah, just pulled down quite soon after the launch, so yeah. But roughly about 13 games I worked on, uh, and also for uh, yeah, the mobile, uh, more than 10 games I, I made, a, uh, I, I worked on the project, yes. And currently I'm working for the multiple different uh, companies, like uh, I'm a, a producer at uh, Quasema, working for Pixel United, uh, also for the Proxy Planet. Uh, if you want to contact me, uh, here is my LinkedIn. So yeah, just message me when you yeah, yeah, when you, when you have any question or anything you want to talk with me. Yes. And let's uh, jump into the topic. Yes. Mm, the live ops. Uh, this is not research. This is not a study. Uh, this is what I did before. And, uh, and as I told you, I was a programmer. So I was running the, the, the team. And yeah, uh, this live ops is not for the game development itself, but is for kind of a post production and uh, delivering the game to the players, isn't it? So, yeah, this is quite different than just making the game. Uh, but I believe this is really important these days, especially like uh, uh, Live Ops itself. Uh, we all know what is Live Ops, uh, is uh, trying to improve and change the game uh, yeah, continuously, uh, even after the launching the game. And what we expect from the live ops, um, actually, yeah, I, I wrote this something like this, but isn't it like uh, uh, the company wants more money, yeah, more revenue. So yeah, uh, it's honestly, the expectation is want to make more revenue from your project, your game, your service. So that is what we are aiming for. Uh, even from Ilka, uh, the CEO at Supercell, yeah, he uh, posted this blog uh, only this only this year. Yes, yeah, and in 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 here he also elaborate about uh, the live ops, how to uh, how to handle that in the team. Yeah, he he want to make it more 
uh, better way, a productive way to support live ops, even in the supercell. Yeah. So yeah, live ops is getting more, more and more important every day. And then what is live ops automation? Yeah. Uh, maybe if the word automation comes up, then probably you can think about something like this, manufacturing automation, or like a machine learning and AI thing, uh, very hot topics these days, isn't it? So yeah, this kind of thing. But yeah, I'm not going to uh, talk about the, all the details or the very, uh, the fancy super rocket, uh, space rocket science or something like that. Yeah, um, I am just want to more focus on how we can run uh, and then operate the manual uh, manual operation into the automated automa uh, the operation. So because it's like a, yeah, mm, isn't it? Uh, we all know how to run our games. We all know how to run our service. And uh, we already have an experience how to run, uh, how to uh, engage with the players. But then it's like uh, if we want to change everything in a new way, new stage, uh, using the AI or some, some kind of a very new technology, that can be a very big challenge. So what I want to propose, actually what I, what I did before is just trying to top up a little bit more from what, you, what uh, you already have before and then just make it run by itself. Yeah, that is, uh, I think that is a quite uh, yeah, better way of what we can uh, handle these days. Uh, the main thing uh, uh, when, uh, the main, main consideration about when we doing the automation is like uh, we want the player experience to continue even after automating your live off system. It's like uh, sometimes, isn't it? Like let's say uh, the one of the biggest uh, automation these days from my personal opinion is the car driving automation. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I really love driving car, yeah, by myself. Yeah, I don't want to sit, yeah, in the rear seat or, yeah, somewhere else. Yeah, I, I love to drive by myself. And I'm, sometimes I'm imagining, like, uh, what will be happen? How can I, what, what I'm going to feel when I just sit uh, on the driving, uh, driving position, but I'm not doing anything. Yeah. And then... Yeah, it, it gives me a, some kind of a little bit weird imagination. Like, uh, yeah, isn't it? I'm, I'm sitting on the driving position, but I'm not driving the car. Then what I'm doing there? Yeah. So, yeah, the main point of my opinion is giving the same experience. It's like, uh, okay, for me, yeah, I'm, if I'm sitting on the driving position, I want to drive. And then, yeah, probably the AI or the system, automation system, going to help me. But uh, it have to help me to feel, uh, to, to make me feel better experience of driving. Yeah, not to avoiding from my own driving. Yeah, that is what I'm looking for. So that's, that's why I'm not buying Tesla. It's not because of the budget. It's not because of my money. Yeah, that's the only reason I'm not. Yeah, buying the Tesla. Okay, let's say like that, yeah. Uh, but anyway, yes, so I think the most important thing is the player experience. We need to, well, we want to keep the player experience the same as much as before. And if we can increase that experience in a better way, why not? That will be the best. And yes, uh, once more, from the perspective of the business, yes, cost efficiency is the, the one of the biggest topic, isn't it? So yeah, uh, yeah, we we have to think about the ROI. Yeah, I'll give you the example at the end of the presentation. What happened uh, after this automation? Yes, so let's go into the design and implementation. How I actually uh, work on this system, on the system, yeah. Uh, before implementing, I uh, made up the this these three uh, direction. 
Yeah, the first one is no human touch. Yeah, this is automation, isn't it? No human touch, but runs same as before. This is what I talked to you. It's like, uh, yeah, uh, I wanted the, the system to run just exactly same as uh, before. Yeah, and the second uh, direction uh, was the building on the top of manual operation. There's a several reason about this. It's like uh, one of the reason is like, uh, mm, honestly, I don't 100% believe automation. Yeah, I'm sorry about it. <laughs> yeah, it is because it's a system. I I I, I know programming. Uh, it can make problem anytime. Yeah, even the computer. You run the computer for like uh, several months on. Yeah, sometimes your 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 system is not going to respond in a yeah the the correct way, isn't it? So yeah, I don't want the situation like that. Yeah, so uh, everything uh, I built on the manual operation, top of the op manual operation, not just the new one. So yeah, when something happened, still the manual operation, the key buttons or yeah, everything's are there. So yeah, you can join in, you can, you can change something, you can turn it off, turn it on again. Yeah, you can do so everything, whatever you want. Yeah, so leave, uh, keep leaving the, the manual operation is also very, very important, yeah. And uh, reduce any future risk. So it's like, uh, yeah, this is a little bit difficult, but try to list down, yeah, all the the possible situation, what you think for your system, yeah, because anyway, it's it's going to run by itself. So we have to think about, okay, what could happen after this automation system, yeah. So just try to list down uh, everything, uh, and then try to avoid th that, uh, that risk from your system, yeah. And the actual implementation steps, uh, yeah, my, my team went through these three steps. So starting from the service design. Yeah, service design is a very big topic. Mm, yeah, if there is any other time I can explain more about it, uh, then yeah, yeah, maybe I can give you more details, but not today. Yeah, but anyway, the service design is including the designing of the entire, uh, your service, it, not only about the system itself. It's like uh, how you are going to deliver uh, and then show up your, uh, your, your system, your service uh, experience. How, what is going to be the experience from the players, yeah, how you are going to accept uh, the feedback and everything, yeah, so the service design is really important. And then when your service design is there, yeah, you can set up the rules. Uh, the rule is going to be the, the main, uh, the detail about how, what you are going to automate. And then, yeah, you build, uh, real, uh, actually build the scheduler. Uh, I, I, I just named this as a scheduler, but yeah, maybe you can change the name, whatever you want, like an automated engine or automated triggers or like a, uh, something like an autobot or whatever. Yeah, it's not really important. But anyway, this, uh, this scheduler is going to be the main core of your automation system. Yeah. So let's go a little bit more one by one. Yeah, uh, as we all know, this is uh, kind of a very simple process of how we make the game. Yeah. So there is a game design, implementation, testing, and release. Yeah. So, but uh, when we go into the live service uh, after the lunch, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, the game is going to be in live service stage. Yeah. And this live service stage, you will get all the player feedback. Yeah. Not only from the player, ev from everyone. Yeah. Even sometimes your kids is just coming to you and complaining. Yeah. Why, why this like this? Yeah. Why that? And yeah, it's not, yeah. Yeah. It's not a real player feedback, but yeah, uh, we, as you are parents, then you have to understand your kids, yeah. So anyway, yeah, there is a lot of uh, uh, feedback from everywhere. So all these feedbacks go back to the game design, including the bugs, tuning, improvements, service update, and everything. And then, yeah, also there is a new feature, new update, new contents, yeah, some kind of a new 
system external system you want to implement into your system your games then yeah there was a, there's a lot of things tons of uh, uh the work to do uh, isn't it yeah, and then yeah you dump back into the the first stage and that is going to be a service design yeah so you set up the service design again and then implement that into your service and then test it and then yeah ship it on live and then go back to service design. Yeah, so I think this is the live service iteration process. About the rules, uh, in my opinion, there are two big different categories of rules in the game. Yeah, uh, one is uh, repetitive rules and the other one is uh, conditional rules. Yeah, the, yeah it's quite clear isn't it like uh, some of the yeah most of the games uh from my view uh we can categorize the rules just like this yeah some some kind of a system just coming up repeatedly then yeah that's the repetitive rules if there is a, some kind of trigger by the player or the event yeah that is a conditional rule and all these rules are going to configure into your game yeah so your game is actually running the rules and then if there is a rule, uh, also the player feedback uh, when the game goes for live, yeah. Uh, also, uh, end of the, this rule, there is uh, another cycle uh, coming back from the players, from the, the, your service. And then, yeah, you, have, you maybe need to tweak your game rules or con configuration to uh, the run the rules, yeah. And if there is a, some kind of an automated system to update your configuration of the rules, yeah, that is also part of uh, the automation system, isn't it? Yeah. Not only the f uh, be uh, because of the feedback, uh, sometimes you have to add up or top up or update the new one into your rules. Yeah. So, and then there is a scheduler. Yeah, uh, as I told you, this scheduler is actual engine of everything. So the scheduler is going to touch the the injection of your new rules or configuration. Yeah, and in this scheduler, if you see, uh, I also put uh, the three main direction how to implement the scheduler. Yeah. So the first one is minimum dependencies. Yeah, this is also related to the, the topping up from the manual operation. Yeah, this is quite uh, important, I, f I found out. Uh, I mean, uh, if there is a lot of dependency in your system, especially for the scheduler, yeah, it can be quite dangerous uh, in some point. Yeah, because it's like, a, uh, you can imagine, isn't it? Like a, when you do the automation, that means there's not, maybe uh, not many people of operators are going to inspect your system. So it's like uh, quite a lot of times it's going to run by itself. And if you have experience of uh, programming, then yeah, probably you can imagine what that means. It's like, uh, yeah, even for myself these days, uh, if I go back, uh, just one week before to check out my previous commit, <laughs> the uh, the code of commit. Then I need I need time to read back. It's like I cannot, yeah, pull back pull pull out my old memories just the weeks ago. Yeah, and then it's very difficult to come back again. So yeah, uh, the minimum dependency is is giving you to make uh, to to isolate uh, this system to run by itself not to touch from the others not to uh, make any interference uh, just make it run by uh, very uh, by itself yes and also the plugin uh, on the interface over the interface is also very important because it's like uh, uh, maybe in some future you need to update your scheduler or you need to change something in or outside of the scheduler. Then if your schedulers, uh, a scheduler is totally attached with your own live ops or your game, 
then it will be very difficult to uh, replace it. So try to make uh, some kind of interface and then yeah, make uh, some plug-in system to just plug in or out uh, easily uh, from your implementation. Yeah. And yeah, obviously the keep it small and simple is the, the best. Yeah, because it's like uh, if your system goes more complicated, more bigger, then yeah, it could make uh, quite a lot of headaches. Uh, so yeah, this is also quite important. Mm. So inside the scheduler, there's are uh, quite a lot of small pieces uh, to set uh, to build up this scheduler. Uh, so it here, this is just an illustration. So yeah, it's, it's much more bigger than showing up here. But yeah, I try to uh, make it uh, simpler as much as I can. Yeah, but anyway, yes, in the scheduler, you can see there is a game backend. Yeah, it's, it's communicating the game backend also with the database, uh, data pipeline, and your tools, live ops tools, and everything. So this is kind of a, a middle of all your service. Yeah, center of all your service. So if there is, so example, if there is any data uh, in your data pipeline, so the players are, uh, ha there is a, some kind of a trend of gameplay, then maybe this uh, scheduler can uh, bring it out, uh, the data, and then update your configuration to change your live ops experience for the player. Yeah, something like that. So yeah, this can be uh, the handle by your scheduler. So this the scheduler is going to be the, the main uh, control system of your automation. Yeah. Uh, the one example here, uh, this example is what actually I did uh, in my, one of my previous game. Mm, yeah, I'm very sorry about the, the overlapping of the, 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 the word there. Uh, maybe it's because of the font. Yeah, but anyway, yes, uh, yeah, there was uh, this kind of a random box. Yeah, uh, it, has a, it has its own name, but let's say it's a random box. So uh, when the player play the game, uh, the, the game is going to give you the random box after your play. And then, yeah, you, if, when you open it, uh, there's a lot of items inside there. So it's quite, yeah, uh, quite often we use for the game. Game reward, isn't it? So yeah, we describe the, the uh, our team. Uh, we describe uh, all the detail about the random box, uh, and then we find out. Okay, so where is the rules? Uh, what is the rule for this random box? So here is the rule. It's like uh, consider uh, the game progress, uh, uh, the game progress and requirement of the. Uh, yeah, sorry, the, the consider about the game progress, uh, the requirement of the game or the season or everything, and then also consider the demanding uh, what the player looking for, what they are uh, more expecting uh, during the gameplay. Yeah, and then, yeah, we put these as a preset and data analyzer. Yeah, so it's like, a, uh, the game pro progress and the requirement is coming from the preset. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, this is uh, kind of a pre-configured from the game designer or someone in your team. And the demanding is usually coming from the data pipeline. So there is a data pipeline, so we can see, okay, uh, these days the players are looking for more of this kind of item, that kind of a event or something like that. So we collect all the information from uh, everywhere. And then we find out, okay, then how we are going to schedule this? Yeah, how we are going to control this system? So here is uh, the, the main, main uh, topics about the scheduler. And then inside the scheduler, there is a trigger, timer, clock, yeah, setter, resetter, uh, the few of the features in there. And then, yeah, you can see uh, the main setting of the, this configuration was done by the game designer before. Yeah, that was the first one. The second one, uh, when it comes out, yeah, there is a kind of uh, some uh, updating the data. Yeah, so it's like uh, uh, the price can be changed a little bit or like a configure, configure of the items can be changed a little bit. Yeah, something like that. So the scheduler is going to touch the data 
uh, to make up this uh, random box. Yeah. So this is uh, the very simple example of the scheduler and finding out the rules from your game. Yeah. And what it exactly happened? Uh, yeah. The one example, uh, the trials rising. Uh, maybe some of you already have played this. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Before this automation system, automation system, there was 15 to 20 people working on the live ops team. Yeah, including myself. Yeah, there was 15 to 20 people. But uh, after we implement this uh, automation system, actually it took about six months. Yeah, six months. And then after uh, this automation system, yeah, we spent only two hours per month. Yeah, by one person. Yeah, and even that one person was me. Yeah, and what I was doing for two hours, uh, sometimes it was not even a two hours, yeah, because uh, I just check out, check the, the, the monitoring system, I just check the reports, if there's any red signal, yeah, red light, yeah, if there's any something weird happen, and then, yeah, just go through the logs and then check out everything, and then if nothing happened, just leave it there, because it's running, yeah, it's running, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I was in the team for... Mm, about seven, eight months after this automation. And yeah, I don't have any memory to spend more than two hours per month after this. Yeah, so it, it was quite okay. Mm, actually, maybe it's also because the trials rising, uh, the live ops was quite simple. Yeah, it was not a real scale of the MMORPG, like a World of Warcraft or Fortnite. Yeah, like a. Yeah, I, I saw the Fortnite uh, now have uh, uh, another million people in the gameplay. Uh, yeah, just after the new patch. Yeah, probably that kind of system could be much more difficult to automate the live ops. But yeah, if it's not like that, yeah, why not? We can do that. Yeah, uh, it's actually not very difficult topic. It's only uh, time spending topics. Yeah. So future of the live ops, yeah, we know AI is there. Mm. When I was working for Trials of Rising, the AI was not like today. Yeah, it was already three years ago. Already, yeah. Somehow, yeah, the AI just yeah <laughs> improved really extremely. Uh, yeah, high during last two years. Yeah, it was just before the AI come up. So yeah, yeah, and but yeah, now these days, uh, if you want to automate your system, uh, I think the a you can also get more support from the AI. And when you try to automate this uh, in live ops, yes, the players are the most important. Don't try to think from your perspective, not from the company's pr perspective. Yeah, because what is the most important for the live ops? Yeah, keep the player experience and then improve that from there. Yeah, so the player experience experience is the most important. So yeah, by player is the most big topic for the live ops, and the game itself is the service, not just the single game play or the rule or story anymore. Yeah, if we move into the live ops. Now this is the service, yeah. So it's just like, uh, yeah, we are not just delivering the one single pizza to the person, yeah. It's like uh, we are building up the whole process and everything about the, 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 the entire franchise of the pizza system, pizza delivery system. Yeah, that is the service. And then, yeah, so that's why because... Uh, the t you have to start from the service design, not just only focusing on your game design itself. Yes, uh, the game design is Im still important. You have to think about your level design, system design, quest design, ev everything. But yeah, please also include the service design at the beginning. Yeah, if you miss out the service design, it will be very difficult to update and top up your live service after the uh, launching your game. So the takeaway from my presentation today, yes, I want to say uh, please 
top up from the existing system. Yeah, system can make error anytime. Yeah, and build this in your backend system. Yeah, so not bring your automated system into the game client or the, the on the hands of player itself. Yeah, uh, I believe players. Yes, uh, let's say all we all honest, we are fairness <laughs> to each other. Yes, but yeah, uh, I don't want really want to make any risk in my system. So please build everything in the backend. Yes. And then once more, service design is very important. And then, yeah, uh, the, the two slides uh, in my presentation, yeah, these two was what uh, I really strongly put it on the wall and then, yeah, talk with everyone in my team during the implementation. So, yeah, try to make a correct direction and then try to make uh, the, the correct process to build up your system. Yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Mm, I didn't want to go in very deep about how to implement, but I hope uh, this presentation gave you some idea how to work on your live ops and your automation system. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. That was really hard for me to understand, <laughs> but I do have a lot of questions. If there's a question from the audience, we can start from there. So, Jordan, just please stand up and wait for the mic. Yes, thank you. Very uh, fascinating talk. Um, I was just wondering, you had yeah, a lot of great pieces and talking about all, all the different kind of uh, approaches to this kind of automation. Um, I was just really curious about like the trials rising. Um, if you could provide some sort of uh, specific examples, like uh, for a game like that, of just some of the automations that were made uh, in a specific case like that, I'd be really uh, fascinated to know. Uh, yeah, the, actually, that random box was from Trial Rising. Uh, the other one is also yeah, maybe a very in, in in short. Uh, maybe I can give you like a, in Trial Rising, there is a kind of a choosing up the the feature of what's that uh, the tracks yeah feature tracks to choose every week something like that. And yeah, uh, that was happened by the game designer before, but we make uh, the 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 game system to uh, yeah, actually that was more uh, related to the trending of the game. Yeah, so the random box was more for, from the demanding of the players, but uh, the, the tracks, uh, picking up the, the feature tracks was uh, more close to the trending of the game. So yeah, uh, we, we bring all the, the, uh, the data from the data pipeline and then yeah, uh, organize it and then yeah, uh, select the, the, the tracks. So those kind of things, yes. Much, yeah, helpful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I, I have a couple of questions myself. Is that, okay, so the trials example was kind of showing this kind of huge power, how it impacts the daily lives of the live ops team. So you said that you, you kind of <laughs> made the team <laughs> obsolete and <laughs> just saved the work for you. I mean, but it seems like a really huge impact to the, to the process itself. So what are, the, what are the people that are still needed in, in that live ops team? Uh, still, okay. Uh, still there are some, some area uh, needed by the human. It's like an example. In example in trials, there was a kind of a UGC contents. It's like a user-generated mm. contents. Yeah. Uh, the, so the player can design their own t-shirts or their own bikes. And as you know, it's like a... Mm, yeah, there are some some players like uh, drawing some something <laughs> on your teachers. <laughs> Time to yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's not easy to <laughs> speak out, but yeah, it's like uh, so. And then yeah, the, we we made a kind of filter to yeah. check everything, but uh, even the AI, yeah, it's yeah, humans are really creative. Yeah, they know how to <laughs> avoid the AI, how yeah. to jump up uh, over the, the AI. So yeah, still, uh, the, there is a still area that people need to look around, how to filter out, how to check all the contents. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, what can be automated and what cannot be not? Like, uh, like 
can we build the whole seasonal content kind of pipeline before we even launch? How does it work with automation? Yeah, yeah. usually, as I told you, if there is a rule, that is the easiest one. Uh, yeah. If there's no rule, even the UGC contents, we try to uh, bring some kind of idea like uh, uh, the, from the AI, from the player uh, reputation, and some other data pipeline also. And then we combine everything to uh, help the operator. It's like uh, because it's like the the teachers. Uh, I I cannot remember exact numbers, but I, I there was a kind of a over few hundred teachers every day coming up in a new <laughs> with the new images, and yeah. it's very difficult to go through everything. So it's like uh, those kind of uh, the the filtering or the AI system could help the the operator to prioritize what to look more, what where to spend more time. Yeah. And actually, it's like a, that, that kind of things can give a better uh, service quality because uh, operator can also uh, spend more time uh, on a more important point of the, the contents of and the game. Yeah. Mm. So how far the kind of live ops, live ops can be uh, automated in this 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 way? Like, how much can you tie things into kind of? Uh, forecasted metrics that, or is there like a lot of surprises that might come with the metrics once the, the game is launched and then your automated pipeline is kind of like a, uh, not working anymore and mm. then you have to do it again. What, mm -hmm. What's your pro, uh, kind of a forecast for that? Can uh, that happen that you kind of plan it all and then it's like it just doesn't work in that way when the game is out? Uh, yeah, every time there is a trials and errors. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's why it's like uh, also I, I tell uh, I told like uh, uh, your, your manual operation system have to be there sti still have to be there. Yeah, yeah. but uh, anyway, it's like uh, I think uh, yeah every time uh, it it, it, it ev all the service it takes times to make all the automated live service because it's like uh, when we do the uh, service design we try to imagine what is going to be happen in the future mm. but that's not enough yeah when we actually run launch the game then we found out yeah okay this is missing that we have to make it more okay now this is not uh, the, the popular anymore the peoples are yeah moving different way something like that so yeah uh, it, it takes time to settle down all your automation system mm. yeah, even you prepare everything in beforehand uh, it yeah, that's why it's like uh, I, I, even from the trial rising, it took six months. Uh, there was a one uh, I didn't brought that, but yeah, uh, one of my previous uh, RPG uh, RPG game, it took m much more longer than that, like uh, almost a year. Uh, and that year, the one year is not only to implement the system. It's like uh, make it uh, just check out. Uh, it's working well. Uh, trials, er trial and errors, and then yeah, improve it. Yeah, change uh, the automation system by itself to uh, to to yeah, the, to give the the correct result or the experience to the players. So it's like uh, it's quite painful. Uh, it's almost like uh, building up the new game. But sometimes it's like uh, it, it's also uh, after that yeah, it will run. You know, it, it's going to run by itself, mm. and and it's not like uh, just one single day. Okay, yeah, we finished the system, so yeah, from tomorrow we don't need anyone. <laughs> it's not like that. It's like mm. uh, yeah, it's even the system is running. Yeah, we still need people, person, and then yeah, slowly we can transit into the automated phase. Right. Yes. So would you suggest that the kind of automated, when you build the pipeline, when you start making the game, the mm -hmm. automated live op system is kind of created like soft launch time or like the actual launch? Like I don't know what terms we even use these days. The best, uh, from my view, uh, the best is from the, the soft launch, yes. Yeah. Because it's going to touch the game itself. So if your system is already running together with the soft launch itself, that is the best. Uh, and then you can save some time. You can you can uh, make a less uh, trials and error from the system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, what I uh, what I can recommend. But yeah, not only that. Like uh, when you launch the the actual the global launch or like uh, whatever we say, yeah, the the commercial launch. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's still possible to uh, replace the system. Yeah. yeah. 
So if there's no questions in the audience, and we don't have questions in the chat, I have this nasty mm -hmm. question for you. Uh, you already touched it a little bit. But what is your forecast on, on the live ops trend and then the generative AI trend coming together? Like what are the possibilities that games can have with uh, with yeah, uh, very good AI. question. Yeah, uh, every time I'm I'm thinking about this topic, yeah, because it's like uh, there's not many um, the the game service uh, having the the AI in the live ops. Yeah, we we mostly. I think we also have a topic here, like about the, the AI. But yeah, yeah it's like uh, uh, the most of the game developers they are uh, yeah uh, having a support from the AI for the development side, not mm. for the live off side, mm. because live offs is more related to the person, not from the the just a result of the your work. Mm. So yeah, from that point of view, uh, I think uh, in the future, in the future, it, the the, the AI is going to be a kind of a, a assistant or support system uh, mainly for your game live ops. Uh, I'm not really sure the AI can totally replace or is totally going to run the mm. uh, the live ops by itself because mm. at least it's like a, isn't it? We know when it's like a, when we uh, query to some public office yeah like uh, okay where is my application mm. <laughs> and then yeah sometimes uh, your the you you your reply uh, of the email is almost copy and paste mm. yeah it's like uh, we know yeah some somebody just copy and paste the reply mm. yeah something like that so and and that is not a real really good experience isn't it? it's like uh, we we are looking for a little bit more humanity from the the email yeah. so from that point of view yeah probably ai can write a little bit more better way than <laughs> just copy and pasting mm. but prob yeah we maybe can still feel okay this is written by the, the AI. Mm. So those kind of area, uh, I think, uh, still the human need to check uh, the final result. Yeah. yeah, that is these days what we are talking about the AI, isn't it? So yeah. the the AI is going to support and help out uh, the the what we are going to do. Mm. So uh, from the point of view of live ops, uh, the final touch could be happened by the person, the operator itself. But uh, the main ma majority of the system, like uh, just filtering or like uh, making a prioritizing the list or the re -trigger, the triggering the system, those kind of things can be happened by the AI. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will see what's going yeah. to happen. Let's see. <laughs> um, so we're going to thank you, Chris, so much for thank this you. talk. And mm -hmm. it's, it's like the whole li live ops system is just getting more complicated yeah. and more technical. The, the kind of the... The trend that we have with the games and services it has been constantly transforming and maturing. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens in the future. Thank you for thank your you. insight. Yeah, thank you very much.